Alrighty, people, now we're going to talk about using Venn diagrams to determine whether an argument is valid. Last time, we talked about just using Venn diagrams to diagram single categorical claims. But now we're going to talk about categorical syllogisms. A syllogism is a two-premise deductive argument. Now, if it's a two-premise argument, how many claims does it have? Three claims total because all arguments have a conclusion, and we assume just one conclusion here. So a two-premise argument is a three-claim argument. So a categorical syllogism is a syllogism that has all categorical claims. Now, it has exactly three terms in it total, but each of them appear twice. And they're going to appear in different claims. All right? But they have to appear exactly twice throughout the argument. Okay? So let's take a look at a basic categorical syllogism, one that's been called Barbara by the medieval philosophers who studied categorical logic. It's called Barba because it's composed of all A claims. And so B A R B A R A was a good choice. All I'm not going to come up with examples. You can fill in the blank and you should fill in the blank with your own so you can see what's going on. But I'm just going to talk about the forms now and how to diagram the form. So I'll just use individual letters to represent whatever category you want to think of. Alright, so the argument is that all A are B, all B are C, therefore, all A are C. Okay, now, key thing here, people. The whole point of Venn diagramming a categorical syllogism is to determine whether that argument is a valid argument. That is the whole point. Now, an argument's valid when, if the premises were true, then the conclusion would have to be true. Okay? So, here we're dealing with possibility, and we're, we're interested in those possible worlds, we might say, where the premises are true. And we want to think, well, is there any possible world, even one, where all of the premises are true, but the conclusion is false. So just, is it possible for the premises to be true while the conclusion is false? Alright, so what you're going to do when you use a Venn diagram to represent the argument is you diagram the premises. Remember, diagramming a claim means representing it as if it were true. So what you're doing is you're pretending that the premises are true. Alright, then what you do is you read off of the diagram whether the conclusion can be false. Okay? If the conclusion can't be false when you diagram the premises as true, it's just impossible, then you know that it's a valid argument. However, if there's even one possible way for the conclusion to be false while the premises are true, then you know that it's going to be an invalid argument, that the argument is not valid. All right, so let's take a look at that in action. Let's get diagramming. Now, I told you before that when you're Venn diagramming just one claim, you've got two categories. Now we have three different categories, A, B, and C. The first term, the subject term in your conclusion is known as the minor term. Thank you. 
the predicate term in your conclusion is known as the major term. And the one that's left out, the one that's stuck in the middle, that's the middle term. Okay, and these are ways to refer to the term by itself outside the argument. So, minor term applies to this A here and the A up there. Middle term applies to both of the Bs, and major term applies to both of the Cs in this example. Okay, now we want to recognize which is which because we want to uh, have a standard way of representing these categories together. All right, so we, we're going to draw our circles, and we need three circles, one for each of the categories. And we always make sure that we put the minor term and the major term and the middle term in the same place. That way, when we look from one person's diagram to the next, we don't have to sort of turn our heads, or we don't have to think about the mirror image. We just have this standard so it's easy to follow from one to the next. Okay, so our minor term is A, our major term is C, and our middle term is B. So, minor term, major term, middle term. An easy way to think about this is the B down here is kind of in the middle. Okay, so this is the one on the left, that's on the right, this one's in the middle. Okay, thinking horizontally. And then minor and major terms, well, they just go in the same order as the conclusion does. All A or C, so A comes first on the left, and then C is second on the right. Okay, so it Keep that in mind, it shouldn't be too hard to remember what order to put them in. Okay? Now, we want to treat these claims individually. We don't want to confuse ourselves too much. So, just treat them individually. Look at the first one, all A or B. Now, if you've watched the previous video, if you know how to, to diagram an individual claim, an A claim, then you should know what to do here. Because you're just going to ignore the category that's not mentioned. C is not mentioned. All A or B. C is nowhere to be found. So you're going to completely ignore it in this case. So all A or B, just imagine that you're diagramming a single term. You know, A and B are alone by themselves off in a closet. I don't know. But you're ignoring C. So if you were just diagramming all A or B, then you're, you're trying to show that there's no A that's not a B. So just like your normal A universal claim, you're going to ignore the C circle and just shade it as if you had A and B by themselves like this. So imagine you had A and B the claim all A or B would be shaded like that, where you shade out the left side. So, same kind of thing here, if you turn your head a bit. Now, it crosses the line in the C circle, but that, that doesn't matter, okay, because you're ignoring C. Now, the second claim is all B are C. Now, this is going to be the same kind of thing. You're just ignoring A, because A is not even mentioned. You start off with your subject term, B, okay, so I'm in the B circle, think about the B circle. Now, I'm saying that there, there is nothing that's a B, nothing that's in the B circle, that's not also a C. So if it's in the B circle, it has to be in the C circle. To represent that, I shade out all of those spaces that represent something that's a B but outside of the C circle. Now, just like last time, this crosses into the category that wasn't mentioned. It doesn't matter. We're ignoring that. We're acting just as if B and C exist by themselves in this case. All right. Now, I have a question for you. Do I diagram the conclusion? Think about what I said earlier. I'm giving you time. We can pause it if you need more time. No! You don't diagram your conclusion. 